What is going on YouTube? This is Dirt Track Dave here again with another informative dirt late model tech tip video. And I know it's been a while since so I've put out some more tech videos, but I've got more to come. I've been doing a lot of racing, a lot of testing, getting that data. But today we're going to be talking about the forces that are being generated by your rear end, thrust angles, rotational forces, and more. So stay tuned. can't say enough how much I appreciate the growing support of the channel all the subscribers subscribing to the channel the likes the shares my Facebook page but I do this for the racer it's real data real info and if you're new to the channel you can hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen hit the bell icon so you get all the notifications when I upload content that way you'll be notified of any future content that I put up so without further ado, let's get into the forces that are being generated by these dirt lake model rear ends, their four bars, torque arm, and everything that goes into it. This will help you make better decisions on the track by understanding the forces that are being generated with these cars. So we're gonna have dirt lake model appreciation for a minute. We're gonna watch some suspension cam video that I've gathered here um, past few months and uh, I'm just going to watch and then uh, after we watch these two videos we'll go into more in-depth discussion of what's going on but just pay attention to all the movements um, you know four bar movements bird cage movements shot movement left to right There's a lot of things going on right there, some more noticeable than others, some very subtle. So we'll check the second video out and then we'll put the two together and show you how all this four link torque arm everything works as one unit. So let's talk on throttle rotational forces. So when you're on the power, your tire is rotating from the outside would be clockwise. But from your inside view here, we're going to looking at counterclockwise. Your rear end is wrapping the opposite way because as torque is applied with these floating bird cages, the rear end tries to wrap the top of the rear 
and the tire is always rotating or always leaning forward direction. So when you have these forces being applied, they have an effect on your lift bar and how it goes up on the fifth coil spring and also braking torque. We'll get into braking torque later. So this is your basic rotation of torque. How it's being applied is coming from the axle to your tire and making your rear end wrap. Now, there's also a forward thrust being applied from the rear end as you're accelerating. So since it's on a fixed bar system, that forward force is transferred through the bars at a specific angle, average angle, so to speak. And those forces go into the chassis and make the chassis either push up, which pushes down on the rear end, or vice versa. So every action has a reaction. So when you increase angle, you increase the upward force. So I always try to look for an average bar angle. I take the top bar, bottom bar, average them out, add them up, divide them by two. Simple math. So every angle change has an effect on the upward thrust and the forward thrust of the rear end. So the more upward angle that they may have in them, you know, the more steeper the angle, the more upward thrust the more downward thrust is applied to the axle into that the corner of the car. So the steeper the right bar angle, the more downward force is applied to the right rear, the more it drives over the left rear. And you want more right rear in traction and less right rear in the slick, obviously, because it's the left rear will give you dig. So here, you can see the forces at work here in the rear end wraps. Like as he gasses it up, you can see that rear end wrapping and uh, fifth coal resisting, off throttle, at dumping, sixth coal catching, and everything's working nice and uh, you know flowing smoothly. The car roll steer is nice. Everything, you know, about three inches of movement on the fifth coal. Pinion lined up nice and straight. I mean everything is. This clip right here is working good. Um, you know, just watch them forces work and, and understand how to, to utilize them. You know, you see the, the bars on the left rear, you know, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see how steep they are. And the reason they're steeper versus the right rear is because you want the left rear to engage faster in most cases. And, you know, obviously the rollster game, but you want that left rear to pop up first, traction up, and then let the right rear stand up at a controlled pace. And that's what gives you speed. You know, not the left rear popping up and right rear, because you know you're gonna be tailing off, no side bite or nothing. But there's a lot of factors other than bar shocks, springs, you know, ride heights. There's so many different factors in it. But this video, you know, we're just discussing forces. So <clears throat> the torque arm, it, you know, can leverage up onto the chassis, and it uses that rotational force to pick up on the car, which you know deserves a, a counter opposing force you know downward if it's picking up it's pushing equally down well it's pushing down you know on the whole rear end so you know if, if you got eight on one side so left rear has you know preload front shock it helps pop it up quicker um but at the same time it you know the closer you get it to that rear end the more leverage it has on it so you get it to the rear you know you may have to spring up because it's going to compress that fifth coal a lot more because there's more torque on it. Tire size has a factor to do with the torque that's being applied to it. The bigger the tire, the greater the torque. So there's always stuff to keep in mind when you're thinking about how these forces are applied. And they all make a difference. Torque arm separation, you know, where it mounts to the rear end, all that has a factor on how the torque arm applies the rotational force to the fifth coal and vice versa to the sixth coal. That length, that distance, all that has a huge factor in it. So I hope you can understand these forces a little bit better by this video. I know there's a lot going on with these race cars, you know, as far as the way these cars are made, the geometries in them and everything. But if you want to learn more about how these cars are set up and how to tune on them and whatnot, just follow the links below in the description. Um, I have guides that offer everything from, you know, setup to scaling to tire work, you know, you know good basic intro stuff, real usable data. No BS, um, I don't put nothing out that hasn't been tested and tested, confirmed, and proven.
if you haven't already subscribed to the channel for more content and uh, you know just help support the channel um, you know like I said I do it for racers and I do this for a living and uh, you know I've been fortunate to be able to help a lot of people and you know, get some wins and get these guys up front and you know less people that uh, you know sell out the more people we have at the races and personally I like these big crowds but just remember to support your local dirt track and your favorite racing driver and as always drive hard and take chances. in here's a bonus tip so anytime you're moving the fifth coal rearward let's say we'll start off with going rearward with the fifth coal you're going to be increasing the anti-squat forces of the car so you're going to be separating the right rear faster this is going to also keep the nose down of the car as it's not picking up more of the front bias of the chassis and more rear bias of the chassis so when you're rearward you get steerability you get right rear separation which is on road throttle rotation so you're getting all that so keep that in mind, especially when you're 30 inches and lower from the center of your rear end. Here's a good example of a lot of rearward anti-squat in the car. You can see it separating the right rear. This is also an occasion of dump. Like when the right rear stands up too aggressively and you don't have enough compression in your shock and it just slams down into the shock, into the spring. do not matter how much spring you put in, it'll still dump. So when you move forward, you do the opposite. You're gaining traction. However, you're getting some adverse effects. One of them would be you're not separating the left rear as aggressively because you don't have the any squat to the rear as you did when the fifth colt was more rearward. So you have to like bite up a little bit, take some rebound out of your shocks, you know, gas up your front shock, whatever you need to do to keep the car up, steer. But beware too much fifth colt forward too early in traction will make a car wheelie almost. So be aware of that. But anyway, this is my tip of the day. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, drive hard. Take chances.